uh, what I remember about you, you were in the fir your first year as a Charger, and I think the big hoopla was you deleting your Twitter account because of certain things you said. How much do you think you've grown from where you are then to where you are right now? Oh, I've grown, man, <laughs> so much. You know, I've, I, I, yeah, I'm not the same person I was when I first got here. I was, a, you know, a lot younger, you know, mentally, you know, just, you know, when I thought I knew everything, but I really didn't. You know, I started reading books, you know, since then, so I've grown, grown a lot mentally. Did something click towards you, click for you towards the end of last season? Because I thought you played maybe your best football as a Charger, in in maybe the four, last four or five weeks of the season. Yeah, to me the biggest thing was just you know finally getting my feet wet and getting some experience and just getting comfortable out there. You know, it was my first time being in, on a big stage. You know, for the major for all the whole game and being a big part of the games. And it just took me a while to to kind of get used to being out there and get comfortable and you know and, and just and lock in. You made a very interesting comment, and this is when the season's over. It's after the playoff loss to the Denver Broncos, and you're clearing out your locker. And you said, and you, you were asked about your almost interception of Peyton Manning on the opening series. And you said, I think it changes the game. This offseason, that will be my motivation, doing ball drills. It's going to sit on me. What do you remember about that play, and how much, how much did, it, did it bug you? It, it, it bothered me a lot. You know, I, I'm always the type to put things on my shoulders and, you know, I had a perfect opportunity to redeem myself, you know, in the, the Thursday night game before that game. You know, I, I felt like I could have had one and then another opportunity came and I didn't capitalize not only, you know, being a great quarterback and Peyton Manning and getting an interception from him, for, for, from him, but, you know, in the playoff game. And like I said, I feel like it would have changed the momentum of the game. You know, they, they won the toss, so they got the momentum. And the first drive, I had a chance to just deflate them a little bit, and, you know, and get that interception. And, you know, so that's, that's just been my biggest motivation. Not the plays that I did make, the interceptions that I did make, it's the ones that I didn't make that, you know, that haunts me the most. So when you talk about doing ball drills and what what are certain things that you work on, whether it's going to be at OTAs, whether it's going to be at your house, you know, I mean, after mini camp breaks, that's it till the summer starts. What what are the little things that you can work on? Oh, man, just just catching the ball in all different angles, you know, doing all my drills and staying focused on, you know, looking the ball all the way in. And, you know, that play, I didn't do that. You know, that play, I seen the ball coming. I was looking at the receiver and, you know, expecting the ball just to fall in my hands. And I didn't look it all the way in. And that was the, the biggest thing, just staying locked in and focused on that play. And this whole offseason, you know, I, I, I've been doing that. And, you know, my, my ball drills are way, way better than they were, you know, last year at that point, you know. So, so the biggest change in my life is, uh, I will say, having my son, you know, Elijah, um, Probably a week after the season was over, he he uh, he was born. So that's been the biggest change in my life. Has it mellowed you out? Do certain things matter to you more? Has do you do? You, have you had to go and reevaluate things? Yeah, my whole life changed. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of things just kind of put got put in perspective, and you just you look at life different when you got a life that's dependent on you for everything and anything. So. You know your priorities change, and you know you definitely have to change your life. Um, good. I mean, Coach Pagano sat next to me in the meeting, so I sit right next to him, and um, you know he takes good notes. You know he's he's a smart guy. He's he's been learning, and you know I think you know every question that Coach asks him about our defense, he's been right on point. You know he's constantly asking me questions, and you know learning from from my experience. But you know from watching his watching his highlight film and watching him at the combine, you know I feel like he's going to be a great asset to our defense. You know just his instincts, and you know people talk about him being a little guy but you know it doesn't really matter you know he, he has a big heart and he loves he loves football and he's dedicated to to what he do so I think he's gonna be a great player one guy people seem to have Charger fans may have forgotten about is Stevie Williams he was drafted last year out of Cal I think fifth round he was injured at a camp what what do you like I mean Eddie Royal raves about him what do you like about this kid he's good he, he's a great player he can run fast you know he's confident and you know he's patient at the line of scrimmage he, he's one of those man-to-man -man corners like one of those guys that that's never really in bad position as a player you know he has really good footwork you know he's a real good player Who's a who has the most speed in the Chargers secondary I don't know it's <laughs> we have we have this is probably our fastest uh secondary since I've, I've been here you know guys like Cromarty you know he, he can run you know I can run I feel for myself you know Verrett he's a fast guy too and you know, obviously Stevie Williams was had a pretty fast forty time, so it'll be a it'll be a close competition. What does Eric Weddle bring on off the field? 
on and off the field, he, he brings greatness. You know, he brings that, that, that mindset to be great every day in everything you do, you know, everything in, in life. Just be great at it and just be the best man and person and football player and, you know, and brother. And, and son and you know dad or whatever it is is be the best at it and you know he's a real smart you know humble player and he, he brings that to our defense you mentioned something i found interesting that john pagano has has jason sit next to you in the meetings now why is that does he uh, do, are you do you want that role as leader i know you were a captain when you were at usc do you think you're going to that role here or you are you you're, you're you become kind of the old guy when it comes amongst the cornerbacks but is that a role that you're embracing or taking on upon yourself definitely it's, it's something that you know i love i love when i can help anybody in, in anything in, in life in general so you know if i can help this young man grow into being the best football player he can be in you know, I want to win. I, I want I want him to be great, and I want everybody on the team to be great. And if I can help him, it's definitely great for me. And I, I take that on, and you know, I love it. And I embrace it, and you know, I want to be that leader. I want to be that that player that that our my team can count on. Mike McCoy, Norv Turner. Lane Kiffin and Pete Carroll. These are four different coaches, very different people that you played for. Give me one thing that each of them has taught you, whether it's good or bad. Oh. Uh, Man, uh, North Turner, I would say he taught me to uh, to stay on top, you know, to, to not, not bite on the double move because that, that was his thing. He was a double move guy. Coach Carroll um, taught me to be confident in myself and to know how good I am and believe in myself. Um, Coach Kiffin, um, you know, he, he taught me, uh, he taught me, <laughs> I can't, yeah, I can't really remember one thing that he taught me. Um, and Coach McCoy, um, so far, you know, he, he's taught me to, to be that guy. He's been telling me to be that guy that, that's not scared to make that play in, in the big games. And, you know, when you're on the island out there to, to know, don't be, don't be afraid to, to make that game-changing play and just take over the game because, you know, that's what great corners do. They, they, you know, they take over the game and change the game. I have to end it on a happy note for you. Now, you're a very, very proud uh, USC Trojan. Anyone that follows you on Twitter knows that. How happy are you that the, the sanctions against your school are finally over? Man, it's, it's probably the best news that USC got in a, in a long time, other than, you know, having a new coach come in and, uh, <laughs> and getting a good <laughs> recruiting class. But it's, it's some great news, and, you know, you know, hopefully we don't have to rebuild too much and we can get back to being the old powerhouse USC that we've always been. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.